In this film, we will see how signals and signal boxes work in the forthcoming version of Simutrans Experimental. We will also look at some of the different types of signal box. In the forthcoming version, it will only be possible to build most types of railway signals if they are connected to a signal box. First, we will look at some of the different types of signal box, and then we will see how a simple railway is signaled. All types of signal box have a maximum range and a maximum number of signals. This is the railway policeman's cottage, the earliest type of signal box available from the 1830s. It is used with time interval signals. This is a mechanical signal box available from the 1860s. It is used with the absolute block signals, usually of the semaphore type. This is an early type of power signal box used with track circuit block signals. It is available from the 1920s. This is a later type of power signal box available from the 1960s. It also works with track circuit block signals, but can handle more signals over a wider area than the earlier version. This is a high-speed signalling tower, available from the 1980s. It is used with cab signalling, which allows trains to go faster than traditional line-side signalling. This is a modern signalling centre, available from the late 1980s. It is used with track circuit block signals, but has an even larger range and can control an even larger number of signals than the 1960s power box. This is an ETRMS control centre available in the 2010s. It can control both cab signalling and moving block signals. Finally, this is an underground signal cabin, which can be built below ground level to operate signals on underground railways where there is no space to build a signal box on the surface. We will now examine how a simple railway can be signalled using the time interval system. Another film will show in more detail how the time interval system works. This is the Quintvale and Colborough Railway, running from Colborough in the west to Quintvale in the east. It is a double track railway and, as we see, it has no signals yet. Before placing any signals, we must first build a signal box, in this case a railway policeman's cottage. Once the cottage is built, we will see that additional icons for building signals appear in the railway construction menu. We will build a choose signal facing into the station so that trains may choose a free platform. We will then build a mechanical repeater the other side of the bridge so that trains do not have to slow down to stop at the choose signal if it is clear. It is important to make sure that the signals are on the left-hand side of the track looking from the direction in which trains on that track are intended to travel. Trains will ignore signals facing the wrong way. Finally, we place an ordinary vane signal facing out of the station. Because signals facing in one direction no longer prevent trains from travelling in the other direction, one-way signs are needed to prevent trains from meeting head-on. The red side of the sign needs to face the direction in which trains are prohibited from travelling. Using one-way signs, we can create a double-track system in which trains can only run in one direction on each line. This improves line capacity compared to single-track running, and in any case, signalling systems for single-track lines are not available before the 1860s. Here is a mid-line section. Again, a cottage must be built before any signals. We place one vane signal on each line facing the appropriate direction opposite the cottage. Again, we build a mechanical repeater for each signal. Notice how it cannot be built too far away from the cottage. When a signal box is deleted, notice how all the connected signals are automatically deleted at the same time. Notice that when signals are built, they face in only one direction. Some types of signals, such as these track circuit block color light signals, can be bidirectional. It costs twice as much to build a bidirectional signal as a unidirectional signal, but the extra money is refunded when it is turned back to unidirectional signal again. We will see how bidirectional signals work in another film. Here is the line with the signalling completed. And here is our first train, going much faster than it would be able to go in the drive-by-sight working method. In this film, we have seen how signals and signal boxes are built, and how they relate to one another. 
In other films, we will see how different sorts of signaling systems, such as time interval, absolute block, and track circuit block work, and see some examples of their use.